we are getting to the finishing line. There are three lectures we did today. Number one, the right to have followers. Amen. Number two, are we prepared for what? Relationship. We study several people's principle that will keep us to build relationship. And number three, are we willing to focus on others? Can you give the Lord a clap offering for that study from my wife? Amen. Excellent job. Excellent job. God bless you, man. Uh, quickly, we don't just want you to go home. We want to test what you know tomorrow. So we are going to divide you into three groups. And three groups, you will choose a captain. You are going to choose a leader. And we are going to add, you are going to be some five questions we give to you. The coordinators and the provincial pastors are excused. They are going to be the judges of the three groups. Can you put the question on the screen, please? Quickly, quickly, quickly. This will take about five minutes. If you're a zonal coordinator, you don't have to take a number. We are going to take a number, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then the one we say here, two we say here, three we stay there. You choose a leader. And then you are going to answer one out of these five questions. And you are going to make a presentation tomorrow. Praise the Lord. A leadership presentation with PowerPoint. And we are going to choose the best group. Am I communicating? It's really going to bring, and we are going to give awards. We are going to give reward for the group that wins. Quickly, the back, the IT department, where are the questions? Pastor Swile will do. Quickly, quickly, let's project this on the screen. So let's quickly start. If you are a zonal coordinator, a provincial pastor, can you please stand up? Amen. Please stand up. Okay, the rest of the people, we are going to ask you to take a number one, two, three. Starting from the front. One, two, three. Okay, to my left there. Okay, while you put up the slide. Your number, ma? One, okay. Two, three. All the ones, make sure you know your number, okay? One, two, mommy can be excused. Three, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, mommy. Three, one, two. Help me, help me out. Let's quickly do this, Fifi. Okay, your number, you are number three. You are number three. One, two, three, one. Two, you have taken? Okay, two, three, one, two. Three, one, two, 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 one, two, three. 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 One, two. Okay, three. You are excused. You are excused. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three. One, two, 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 three. Praise the Lord. All the ones stay to my right. All the ones come together. Two stay together. Three together. Let's quickly do that. Let's quickly do that. One to my right. 
two to the middle, three over there. Quick, let's do that. One to the right, to the right, to my right here. If you are number one, come here. Quickly, let's do that quickly, quickly, quickly. One to the right, two to the middle, three to there. Let's do that quickly. Once, once here. Who is going to win? Okay, one, sit together, sit together, sit together. Quickly, quickly. This is the last thing we are going to do tonight. One, sit together, two together, three together. Three, I don't see many people in number three. Where is number three? Sit down, sit down quietly, sit down quietly. Sit down, sit down, sit down quickly, 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 quickly. Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Where's group number two? Who is group number three? Number one. Okay. Now listen, listen to how we are going to do that. Groups will be divided into three. A coordinator with a secretary shall be appointed in each group. Look around, look around. Who can be your coordinator? Who can be your secretary? Look around, look around, look around. Who is going to be your coordinator? Is going to be the secretary. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Choose, choose one person. Secretary and coordinator. Amen. Okay. You can do that after. Let's go ahead. A group we meet to brainstorm on the questions together and jointly to provide a unified response. You can take this picture with your phone. A presenter will be appointed from each group. Tomorrow, only one person will speak for the group. So you are going to find somebody who is going to speak for you. 15 to 30 minutes should be allowed for each group to work. You can start working tonight or tomorrow. Consequent of which 5 to 7 minutes should be given for presentation for each group. An independent panel of regional pastors and pro, uh, of provincial pastors and zonal coordinators are going to judge you, senior pastor. And the award will be in the following criteria. 25% per category. Content of the presentation, 25%. Relevance and appropriateness of examples, 25%. Adherence to time allocated. If they give you five minutes, you spend six minutes, will be deducted. Amen. And style of presentation of the presenter, composure, communi communication, and clarity. The winner will be announced. Now let's look at the questions. Next slide. Help me out at the back. Next slide. Quick, 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 quick. IT. Give me the remote there, please. Thank you, sir. Okay, question number one. Identify three companies in America, in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Europe that have touched many people's lives. Identify how the company relationship with its workers and customers have positively impacted the success of the company. Trump. In his own... Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> In your own valuation, what have they done differently to earn the trust and the respect of the customers? Amazon, Google, anything. How did the leadership gain personal influence with the workforce? State three characteristics visible in this company over the years that have earned the company the goodwill they enjoy in the competitive market. That's question one. You only take one out of these questions. Number two, assuming you are the CEO of three companies above, how do you handle difficult employees, especially if the problem is traceable to leadership? Relationship is the currency of the kingdom, and relationship is also the bedrock of any organization that wants to succeed in global market. Company XYZ have issues of retaining their staff trained by the company. The staff eventually seek for greener pasture. As the CEO, will you, what will you do to change the narrative of mass exodus of staff after investing so much 
in equipping the staff to benefit the company. So you guys can either choose one or two. Amen. You can only answer one question. Then number three now, how can you best describe the willingness of XYZ company to focus on people? Conflict and confrontation are part of the territory of leadership. What roadmap for healthy confrontation do you suggest XYZ company should be engaged in the event of conflict? Does profit mean more than relationship in XYZ company? Or they value their workers and customers than profit? How there can you, as a CEO, keep the company in proper perspective in tough times? Draw up a plan for XYZ company to make customers at ease with managers at all levels to enhance relationship. You are the CEO of XYZ company. Apply the Foxhole principle to save your company from future collapse. Foxhole principle is tomorrow, or you can read it ahead. Bonus point now. Bonus point. You've taken either question one, two, or three. Now, bonus. How can you, as the CEO of XYZ company, create a win-win relationship in and outside of the organization? Why will you, as a CEO, form a partnership? What are the four key principles of successful partnership that will increase the order of winning together? How do you intend to create satisfaction for your workers and customers as CEO of XYZ company? And how do you intend to sustain the relationship between your employees and customers? Very easy questions, right? <laughs> Amen. Remember, remember now, remember in each group you choose a leader. Amen. You choose a coordinator and a secretary. The group we meet to brainstorm. You can brainstorm tonight. You are going to choose a presenter. PowerPoint, slides, everything. They are going to present tomorrow. Am I clear now? Okay. Have you chosen your leader, your coordinator, and the presenter? Are we all set to go? Do you guys understand the question? Okay. <laughs> the movement says, yes, go to do the presentation tomorrow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Uh, please, we'll be, we'll be closing shortly. Uh, I, I think, Chris, let, let's rise to our feet before uh, uh, we uh, say the closing prayer and some announcements. Please, can we rise? Thank you. Thank you. All right, please conclude quickly. Let, let's rise. We, we want to really thank God for tonight. Uh, please, let's say a word of prayer quickly for Pastor James and Pastor Manita. Please, let, let's pray for them before we leave tonight. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Please, stretch forth your hands towards them. Let, let, let's pray for them. You know, they've, they've really poured out into us tonight. Let's pray that the Lord will empower them. They will not fail. They will not fall. They have sacrificed. They have you know, poured out. They have invested so much in investing into our lives. So let's pray that the Almighty God will reward them. The Lord will enlarge their coast. That continually the Lord will lift them up. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Pray for yourself that what I've learned today, I'll be able to put it into practice. That I'll be able to win souls for the kingdom. That I will win with people. Thank you, Father. We love you. It's a blessed be your holy name. And let, let's, con let's, con let, let's pray concerning tomorrow that tomorrow shall be greater than today. That it will be a successful program all the way. That the Lord will replenish their energy. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. We worship and adore you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I call Pastor, please come for uh, the announcement. Uh, look at the program. Who is doing the, uh, the closing quickly?
Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Can you give the Lord a wonderful clap offering? It has been a wonderful day. And uh, please kindly listen to the following announcement. As you are leaving, there is a takeaway for you that is to go. So that you can have some snacks to snack on as you are leaving or whether in your hotel as well. And please, all the prayer, all the prayer appointees that are involved concerning this program, you are meant to meet here 8 a.m. tomorrow. 8 a.m. tomorrow. We are going to have prayer here 8 a.m. tomorrow. Okay. Your group has well to come. Please, we are starting here 8 a.m. tomorrow. God bless you. All pastors, remember that we have a meeting with the Continental Overseer here by 9 a.m. Not for you to come 902, 901. You're supposed to be here before then. And the Lord will bring all of us safely in Jesus' name. And the registration will continue tomorrow for as many that were not able to get registered today, starting from 9. And the program tomorrow starts immediately 10 a.m. For those of you that came today, you realize that we, came, we started early. 7 is 7. Tomorrow also will be 10 a.m. That is heaven time, not African time or Nigerian time. And God bless you as you come in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, the food is here. So please, as you are going, please take this, this door when you are leaving. Have we shared the grace? Okay, so I would like to call Pastor Iyolua, the Assistant Provincial Pastor, to be able to help us with the closing. Give the Lord a wonderful clap offering as he comes forward. Praise the Lord. Uh, sometimes when you hear so much of those type of teaching, very scholarly, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I'd love to have people like that as my leader because I know I'm on the right track. Anyway, without talking too much, let's just be on our feet. It's good to learn, but I think it's better to own the learning. Why don't you just ask that the Lord will give you understanding that everything you have learned, you'll be a better person through it. And that you'll be a shining example to the church of the living God. Father, we want to say thank you for tonight. Thank you because of our father and our mother that you have given to us and as an example. Blessed Lord be your name, O oh God. Even as we go to our different places tonight, we ask that you go with us. Lord, we are trusting you for a greater outpouring of grace and strength and mercy tomorrow. We ask that your presence will be evident here this tomorrow. That by the time we are leaving, our churches will be better places. There will be greater unction in our churches. Thank you, Lord, for the answer prayer. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can we share the grace? Please, as you are going to pick up the food, make sure you hold somebody's hand and ask that person two things that you learned tonight. That is called the power of reinforcement. Hallelujah. God bless you. Adherence to the time allowed. Your style of presentation, please, leaders and presenters, listen. Your composure, your communication, and your clarity. At the end of that, so while you're presenting, those are the things we're going to be looking at for. At the end, we're going to announce one winner. Our daddy said it has to be one winner. So we will go ahead and there. Uh, the coordinators. And compare that, yes, sir.
This one has a lot of fire in it. Okay, since since the three groups must have to go, let's start from number one. Group one can go first, then followed by group two, then group three. So we'll be sitting over here. And please, while you are presenting, be very mindful of time. We're giving five to seven minutes. Is it five? Or seven? Yeah, we will so use yeah, our yeah, phone to set the we're gonna timer. We're going to set the... Where's the timer? We're going to set the time. Who is representing group one? Brother Shola. Okay. Brother Shola, please go ahead. I said the group two. I get, I We have four criteria. Relevant content, time, and size. What are we, what are we awarding? Is it 10, 10, 10, 10, 10? Please don't put this in. Yes. Then how many okay, minutes here, here. do you want? So we are yes. trying to agree on what we're doing. We are doing uh, relevant, content, relevant, time, time, and time. And time. And so you so say 10, 10, 10, 10, so and then people. so you all of us will do hours, and then we the average is hours. We, okay, we, yes. So let's let's get the big here. So so we are. We are grading them on this four here. So, relevance, yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I just want to thank God for the lives of everyone sitting here this afternoon. I want to thank God, Father and the Lord, Daddy. Brother Shala, you, you have five minutes. So we, we will, oh, the doctor is time, but just to let you know, and the other leaders will be coming to present. You have five minutes, like you heard, uh, that we won't stop you, but the more minutes, the more at the end of the day, may end up with zero. So be careful. So Brother Shola, go ahead. I like your confidence so far. Wow. No good. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. I just want the old house to jump their hands together for my pastor, Pastor Chinwe Unwafo. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, we are the winning team one. Hallelujah. And we are here because there's a project, I mean, there's a particular conference that we're supposed to attend, which is winning with people. Okay, the question specifically stated that, we should identify the three companies where the workers and customers have positive impact on the success of the company. Three companies were identified in the United Kingdom, and the first one calls Tesco, the second one is British Telecommunication Group, and the third one is Berkeley. However, we pick Berkeley as the case study for this particular project. I will quickly talk about Tesco. They are into supermarket business, and they're providing groceries, clothing, electronics, and financial services, British communication, also digital television, and, mo and mobile services to millions of households. However, the Berkeley are into financial businesses. My background happens to be in banking sector for over a decade back home in Nigeria before I relocated to the United States of America. So the next question talks about the fact that we should also in your own evaluation, what have they done differently to earn the trust of customers? Berkeley taking several strategic steps to earn the maintain the trust and respect of their customers. Customer centric, that's the innovation. They introduce different types of innovation, which is mobile and online banking, and also countless payments. They are mobile banking, they are among the best banking sector all over the world that introduce their mobile banking. Go check it. Like how our brother Peter Obi used to say, go and verify. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. So countless payments also, they introduced countless payments, 
also comprehensive financial services, commitment to customer service, ethical practices, and corporate responsibilities, just like in line with our Father and the Lord has been teaching us since yesterday. And also the transparency and accountability. They were accountable for every of their activities, data security and privacy. They ensure that the privacy of their customers is top notch. They do not divert the information of their customers to the top party. And that's why they were able to build confidence. Their customers were able to build confidence in them. In conclusion, by focusing on innovation, customer service, ethical practices, and transparency, Berkeley has successfully built a reputation as a trustworthy and respected financial institution. These efforts have not only differentiated Berkeley from its competitors, but have also fostered long-term loyalty and among its customers. Okay, the next question goes also, says that, that's in line with what our father gave to us, states how did this, the leadership gain personal influence with the workforce, amen. Below are the strategies Beckley's leadership used to gain the personal influence and workforce. Transparent communication, inclusive leadership, and employee engagement. They engage their employee of every of their activities, just like what our father talks about during the training yesterday and today. Recognition and reward system. You reward performance. That motivates staff to want to do what? They want to do more. Hallelujah. Focus on professional development and the leadership of Beckley committed to professional growth and development. They created a career path for their employees. You can see where you are going from the day you step into that particular organization through their organizational structures. Leading by examples, what they were preaching, they were actually putting it into practice as well. Then supportive work environment, social responsibilities and community engagement then responsive leadership during crisis. We all know what happened during COVID-19. You know, they were, that the whole world were always at their feet. But thank God. And those are the pictures of some of their engagement. Then the three characteristics, three visible by Beckley, and the hand them good way. Innovation. One more minute. Innovation, customer-centric. I already mentioned that. So to address the issue of difficult employees as CEO due to increased attrition rate, Based on the second part of the questions, you know, they improve leadership quality and accountability, enhance employee engagement and well-being, strengthening relationship and organizational culture, fostering career growth and development, aging leadership, I mean, aligning leadership with the core value of the organization. And by implementing these strategies as the CEO of Berkeley Banks, I will be able to address the issue of leadership and high staff turnover, creating a more supportive, engaging, and positive work environment that benefits both the employee, our partners, the community, and the company's goals as a whole. So, hallelujah. In conclusion, Pastor also talked about the Fox O principles in weekly, I mean, Fox O principles. So, part of what how we do as the CEO of Berkeley is to introduce these Fox O principles, leadership and vision. And we engage all management staff on weekly meetings so that they can, it can cascade down to all the employees of the organization. Customer focus and the rest, risk management, regulatory compliance, I mean compliance and strategic partners. And those are the pictures. Thank you. Come on, let's give Jesus a very big clap of praise. If you have a, if you have a bad product, call this man. He will market and he will sell it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My apologies. I, I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to give you a little heads up on time. So... I think, I think that uh, favor is working on your behalf. Hallelujah. Please understand that. Uh, amen. Don't worry. You don't know what uh, group, uh, group two or three has. They're already rejoicing. They're already rejoicing. We are not rigging this election. <laughs> Hallelujah. May I please have the honor to invite the representative of group number two.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you all able to see the PowerPoint? Amen. Yes. So, hello everyone. My name is Princess Igabor, and today I'll be representing group number two. Woo! Yes. And so our company name is Elevate Incorporated, and I am the founder of this company. So the question that we chose for our group is how can you describe the willingness of your company to focus on people? So one of the main components of this um, is conflict and confrontation. Um, it's not presented there, but as we know, um, leaders deal with many different types of people. And so at one point or another, you're going to be faced with conflict and you're probably gonna have to confront someone. So um, even though this is true, uh, there's healthy ways that you can confront people and confront conflict with ma a maturity and care. So um, a potential roadmap to engage in healthy conflict includes three essential components. The first component is to establish psychological and mental safety. So what this means is that we need to create an atmosphere where employees feel safe in expressing their different opinions without fear of retribution or getting fired. Second, we need to promote active listening. We need to encourage active listening among team members to understand different perspectives and different viewpoints. We need to be quick to listen and um, we need to collaborate different ideas. And thirdly, we need to provide conflict resolution training. So it's important to equip employees with the necessary skills to address conflicts productively. And so just like our daddy was saying, uh, we need to learn how to invest in our employees and our staff so that they can produce quality work. Thank you. And so now I will bring up our CEO so she can further. <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The next question says that, does profit mean more than relationship? And do you value your workers more than profit? As the CEO, the key to have is to have balance and to invest in my employee development, well-being, and satisfaction as they drive long-term success and profitability. At the same time, maintain a focus of financial sustainability and grow to ensure the company's ability to continue supporting its employee. It's, it's about fostering a culture where both elements are seen as essential components of overall success. So as the CEO, what am I gonna do? The next question says, I have to draw up a plan for my company to enhance the relationship between managers at all levels. So for me to be able to do that, I'm gonna establish customers and management uh, managers committee to strengthen communication and to show commitment to the customers. I'm going to invest in, in, in customers by offering rewards and incentives. This will motivate the customers and build stronger business partnership. I'm going to provide opportunities for customers to access managers at all levels, meaning that customer service desk, customer service feedback, surveys, and so on and so forth. I am going to respond to customers' complaints and requests on a timely basis. I'm going to adapt to customers' needs and to build trust and transparency. Now I want to talk about the foxhole um, principle. The principle is, to, is a concept derived from the military, which I am one of them, referring to the idea that in times of adversity, individuals from strong and rely uh, strong bonds and rely on each other. And as a company, we want to be able to rely on each other. And that's what we hope to do. And to do, to crown it all, as a company, we want to create an adventure whereby all employees, all their families, they interact on a regular basis, organize family picnics and end of the year events. And I'm also going to promote a culture of transparency in the entire organization. Thank you so much. Elevating Corporation! 
<laughs> Even the color of this of, of the jacket she's wearing qualifies her to be Madam CEO. The Bible said that the wealth of the hidden shall be transferred. And you see, as we're enjoying the whole presentation, you know, the, the trans, to transfer the wealth of the hidden is not through speaking in tongues. The church is coming with financial strategies so that we can take over. I believe that after all these presentations, we're going to come up with some business ideas. And then we take over the state of California. Can I get an amen? amen? It's getting better and better. So I'm not saying anything, but it's getting better and better. I have the honor to invite presenter of group number three. No, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> Praise God. So my name is Ijoma Mwokena. I'm trained as a pharmacist. I work with one of the retail community chain stores here in America. So I'm representing group three today. Okay. And we're dealing with this question. How, best, how can you best describe the willingness of the above three companies? So we chose um, three Nigerian companies. We chose Dangote Cement. We chose MTM Nigeria and Nigerian Bottling Company. Now, the reason why we selected, you know what? Unfortunately, I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to go off of here. Thank you. I couldn't access it from my phone, so I'm just going to use my text here on the phone. So the reason why we chose these three companies, how can you best describe their willingness. One thing we know is that they have roots in the community. They have come to appreciate the fact that on their own, they cannot function. And just like we learned today, they have learned the power of synergy. And they have integrated it in their operations back home in Nigeria. Their commitment to social responsibility. You and I know that these three companies, they support a lot of community programs in terms of education, providing education supplies in terms of health, providing health materials like rollback malaria, uh, mosquito nets. So they really go down to the roots. They reach the, the man on the street. They in, impact their lives. They've also shown investment in human capital. In other words, they will train. We have what is called on-the-job training, which is continuous, which is immediate, which is rapid. They also have an opportunity to engage, send their employees outside the country, if need be, or to other locations in the country to be where they are trained, where they receive the knowledge, the skills that they need to perform at 101% in their positions. Long-term perspective, they take a long-term view, recognizing that investing in people and the community is essential, is vital for sustainable growth and success. The second question is conflict and confrontation are parts. How can you best describe in terms of conflict and confrontation? So I'm going to the next slide. Healthy confrontation. They encourage open communication. There are no barriers. And then they encourage, they're trained to listen actively. How do they do that? They get feedback. On the customer receipt, there is always a number. You will call or you will log in and you can give what is called a, a feedback on your experience at the counter where you were helped. And, you know, one of the questions they ask is, who, the, the employee who served you, how was it? And you rate on a scale of 1 to 10. And as much as possible, the goal is to always score 10 on that rating. So the point is, anybody who interacts with them, they want you, the customer, to have an experience that you will never forget. They also focus on issues, not personalities. For example, if they complain that, oh, at this service center, there are long wait lines, then they know they got to, you know, 
move things around in the workflow to try to get the customers out through the door in the shortest time possible. And you know, one thing that, that is also essential is follow up and follow through. They follow up and they follow through. It's one thing to be made aware of what the issue is, but it's another thing to actually follow through and create an improvement in that situation or circumstance. These three companies have demonstrated their commitment to following up and following through. Now, in terms of relationship, how do we enhance customer-manager relationships? Now, I know one thing. Back home in Nigeria, they, they encourage what is called... Um, an involvement and an integration. They identify with um, feedback and studies and research, they identify which communities have their, their, who is their target customer? What are their dynamics? And then they reach out to those target customers, right? They organize focus group discussions right down at the community level. From those focus group discussions and from those interactions, they identify what is the need of the man on the street. Once they get this feedback, they are able to what we call innovation and they modify, and they improve on the product. In other words, they do take account of the feedback from the community and the man on the street to improve the service and the product. We also have what is called cross-functional teams, where you have somebody who is in the front, switching places to somebody who is in the warehouse. In that way, we, there is no gap in teamwork. If, for example, somebody calls off, there's no gap. We are able to move somebody from one department to the other to cover that need as the need arises. There's also recognition and reward for excellence. This is on a daily basis. You know, on a weekly basis, we look at our data and we see that, oh, customer satisfaction has improved by 10%. Oh, the feedback. Oh, now we want to go into digital looking up. We have seen that we're engaging 5% of customers. So with every um, target you meet, there's a reward, there's um, recognition. It's ongoing. It's immediate. It's constant. Now, applying the foxhole principle, which in other words, being strong relationship in difficult times. Now, I know one thing we do is we engage communication. Everybody is engaged. There's the anonymous engagement, and then there's the one that is deliberate and intentional. Whichever one it is, we're able to get information that will be applied to cause a change. We also um, encourage, there's what is called, um, we train people on the job, whether you're a manager or you're a front store or you're an attendant, we're tra they are trained to empathize with a customer. The customer is king. You've heard that quote. And we understand that the customer is responsible for the profitability of the business. So no matter what, if the feedback we get from the customer is we want the 5 a.m. opening, we want the 9 p.m. closing, then we adjust. We see ways we can adjust to meet the needs of the customer who, you know, contribute to the success of the company. Another thing we do is we celebrate successes. We foster a sense of community. And like we've learned, the, the, the foundation of trust. We lead by what? Example. So in other words, I cannot come and tell my staff to do this. And yet when they look at me, I'm not representing. I'm not delivering on my goals. I'm not delivering on my promises. They don't think they can trust me. They don't think I'm reliable or dependable. So whatever managerial level you are, we are trained to be more than we say. We are trained to actually live by example. One thing is obvious from these companies. We've learned what? To prioritize people in terms of the customer and the team members and the staff. Remember, we call them team members because we recognize that they are all together. We're in this business together. We're all partners at the different levels. They are not just staff. They are not just a number. They are not statistics. No, but they are team members. So we are prioritizing people. We are prioritizing relationships. And finally, we navigate challenges and the foundations. We build upon it to create a successful company. Thank you.
Let's put our hands together for Jesus. This, this is good. You know, this is beautiful. This is what church is all about. Amen. Look at how much fun we are having here. And look at the gift that we have in the body of Christ. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, so I, I think we have enough talent to write business proposal. I can see it. One day we are going to see Redeemed Christian Church of God. Only God knows the name of the company. Producing and manufacturing everything. How many of you can believe that? Say amen. I want you to give a very big clap offering for group one, two, and three. Everything came out so powerfully well. But you know, I have a team of most reliable judges. They are putting their numbers together. The Holy Ghost is monitoring the election. There is no Russia interference on this. <laughs> you can see that they are very diligent. We are living in a digital age. I've never seen the this serious before. Pastor Yolua was giving, was already putting questions on my head. <laughs> While we are waiting for the result, I know that I can hear the palpitation of your heartbeat. But don't worry, everybody shall be a winner. And the first shall not be the last, neither will the last be the first. There must be heaven, heaven is on a serious negotiation. Yes. <laughs> While you are waiting, let me give you some scriptures. Wow. Even my hand is already shaking on this. <laughs> Hallelujah. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. Why are you laughing? What the Lord has done for me, He shall be permanent. He shall be permanent. He shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for me. He shall be permanent. He shall be permanent. Permanent. He shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for me. He shall be permanent. Psalm 84, verse number 11, the Bible said, The Lord is a son and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. And no good thing shall he withhold from them that walk it uprightly. So after much heavenly deliberation, even this one went through judicial process. <laughs> Again, we want to appreciate God for all the presenters. Please, let's appreciate God. 
Because we know that in Christ Jesus, we are all winners. Amen. But to fulfill all righteousness, we have to come up with the first, second, and the third. But looking at this result, too close to call. He's not trying to influence the election. <laughs> okay. Well, I will start from the third position. Pastor Val, I need, I need your consultation one more time. be to the name of the Lord. Amen. You know, there are things you cannot do when God is watching. The eyes that neither sleep nor slumber. So we are not changing any figure here. I want to announce the group that took the third position. And this group is called 33.75. And the judges were looking at various aspects of the presentation. And some of the things that they were looking at are one, relevance. Whatever they presented, how is it relevant to the subject? And for all of us that are listening and gaining knowledge and ideas, how is it relevant to you as a person? And of course, we know that we are here for leadership training. So God is improving our lives. Number two, we are also looking at the time management. Time is very, very important. Amen. And then we're also looking at the styles of presentation. You know, there are some of them that came out and rolled out in styles. There are many ways you communicate. Some learn by just looking at the body language, eloquence, the confidence, the ability to speak like Apostle Paul. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then we are also looking at the content. So in all of these aspects, they did pretty well. But we are looking at group Number one scored 33.75 points. And let's give Jesus Christ a very big clap offering. And group one came third position. And group Number three scored 34.75 points and they took second position. I have not announced the result. <laughs> so, 
I am glad to announce to you that group number two scored 37.25 points coming to be first and the winner of this heavily contested too close to call and we announce them to be winner today in the name of Jesus now now let me uh, uh, listen please the Bible is a little leaven leavening the whole lump I want to say to you that the judges the judges we had today because I some some somebody said that spousal influence now I want you to know that there were five judges and they scored independently so we brought the numbers together and then found the average let the church of God say amen now listen just so let you know that your labor was not in vain our provincial pastor listen to yeah so you did not labor in vain so our provincial pastor in his capacity as the provincial pastor is giving a token now listen to this is giving a token first position we take two hundred dollars today come on somebody shout hallelujah Second position, you are going home with $150. Can I hear amen? And God saving the best for last in heavenly places. The third position, you are going home with a token of $100 today. And every presenter, every presenter, you are going to get a free book from our Father in the Lord. So all the presenters, you are entitled to a free copy of our Father in the Lord's book. And on this note, we want to say congratulations to group one, group two, and group number three. And I really want the church to give them a very big hand of praise. Come on, church. Let's celebrate them. Congratulations. We want more and more of this. It's been wonderful. It's been glorious. And to God be all the glory. God bless you. Thank you for serving. And may Almighty God continue to bless each and every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Uh, who is the... Yeah, okay. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Group one, praise the name of the Lord. Team two, praise the name of the Lord. Team three, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. How many would agree with me that we have some CEOs in the house today? Amen. Now, not only do we have CEOs, we have potential CEOs of unicorn companies. I'll explain what a unicorn company is. That is a private company that grows to the value of a billion dollars. Amen. Amen. Now, you are saying amen as if, ah, a billion dollars, okay? If somebody can do it, so can you. If somebody else can do it in this country, so can I. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We have a couple of announcements. Um, we just want to thank uh, every group that participated in that. That was really, really, really great. We have a couple of announcements. Um, I'm going to invite Pastor Dami Suleudu to get ready. He's going to talk about the certificates. Praise the Lord. And then after that, we will have um, our provincial pastor, Pastor Shegun Lushola, for the closing remarks. And then after that, um, our mommy pastor Bimbo will please take us in the closing prayer. And then can I ask the pastors to please wait behind. Once we finish, the pastors please wait behind. Once again, we just thank you so much, our daddy and mommy, Pastor James Fadell and Pastor Manita Fadell. Thank you so much for 
taking time out of your busy schedule to spend these few days with us. It's been a real eye-opener. And the Almighty God will continue to honor you in Jesus' mighty name. We have taken everything you have taught us today to heart. Amen. And these are things we will, we will implement in our lives, in the ministry that the Lord has committed into our hands. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Pastor Dami, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the mighty name of Jesus. How many of us have received something of tangible value? I can only hear the voices of very few of us. How many of you have received something? If you have received something of tangible value in this training, can I see you standing? All right. So when next... The training department of uh, NR2 Province 1 in Southern California is asking for specialized training like this in the future. I believe and trust the living God. You will encourage our heart and support our vision. The choices that we made as a, ch as a province is to develop ourselves and prepare ourselves. You may be seated, please. Because we want to be the best before the, our Lord and Savior comes. He already told us to occupy till I come, but we need to really prepare ourselves. And we're trusting God to have this type of training more coming by the grace of God. So this John Maxwell training that our Father in the Lord presented and our Mother in the Lord presented to us is something that I want everyone who have been here for two days, please, I encourage you to request to have this certificate. And my contact, I'm one of the, you know, representative in the training department in the province. We will make sure that we can get your certificate ready. The names we have on the register seems to come out in a way within, it's just very difficult for us to print those certificates with those names. So I'll be requesting from all the parish pastors the names of those that attended this two days conference and participated in this training. And the training course for you to receive a certificate this John Maxwell certificate is $50 per person. It's the cheapest we can ask you to pay for it. You know, we've, we didn't ask you for a penny for this conference. How many of you paid down for this conference? Nothing. Just the generosity of, of this church, the Redeemed Present Church of God, King's Assembly, somebody know. Can, can we give the Lord a shout of praise for him? Okay, so for this certificate, we go a long way to remind us of what our parents in the Lord have deposited into our life these two days and I can assure you you will never go wrong with this because this will prepare us even as we wait for the return of our Savior and Master. So couples that attended we're giving you a $25 discount instead of paying $50 each you can out both have separate certificates for $75. How about that? Is that something you would like to do? Alright so I pray the Almighty God to bless us. God bless you all. Have a wonderful time. Daddy, I want to, Daddy and Mommy, they are our father and mother in uh, America. One, we want to thank you so much. Uh, we know you've been so busy in the past and there's still uh, a great work ahead of you. Uh, our prayer is that the Almighty God will continue to sustain you, bless you, and enlarge your coast in Jesus' name. Uh, I want to especially acknowledge all those that worked tirelessly behind this scene. Pastor Dami, in fact, I had to force him to, you know, he doesn't want to be seen at all. So we thank God for Pastor Dami. Thank you so much. Pastor Femi, I can follow Jimmy. You know, he, you know, the uh, PA people, people behind, working behind the scene, they kept, those keeping the place clean. We want to thank you so much. The choir, you did excellently well. And many people will want uh, uh, our CEO to be back and our mother to be back next year. If you want him to be back next year, shout hallelujah. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. So when we will see, we we'll just go and be praying and fasting that uh, the calendar will, you know, make it possible next year for him to be here again. So we want to especially, you know, just thank everybody. If I didn't, uh, all our pastors, uh, coordinators, and all of you, there are so much uh, chat on the line, you know, about some people disagreed that uh, it wasn't number one. <laughs> I mean, number two, that one, you know, so, but... Uh, Let's let just take it like that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, please, all pastors, uh, we just want our daddy to pray for us. And if you have one or two questions, it's going to be a very short meeting. Please, uh, immediately we share the grace. Just move to the front. We won't be using the microphone. So if there's any question or anything you have for him, just five, ten minutes. And then we can release you to go home. We want him to pray for all specially at the end as, uh, as before we leave uh, this evening. So I uh, will want to call as we are Pastor Bimbo Lushola, our mother in the province, to uh, take us in the closing prayer. Thank you.